Hello. Hello. Last time on Lost by the Mega Man 7, we just defeated Mash in the Robot Museum. Just in time to catch Wily stealing Gutsman. It revealed the next four Robot Masters to be forked in the game. And now we're going to make a head start on them. Since it's now 2011, and I wish you all a Happy New Year, by the way, I think it's time to have a little bit of fun. Playground, anyone? Yeah, Spring Man is the happier robot, probably one of the happy robot masters, if that phrase actually means anything. As if you couldn't tell, the gimmick is Springs. Lily White would be so happy. Uh, oh god. Um, I never said that. Lots of spring-based enemies. They should have brought off the bomb head springs from Megon 6. You know, the ones in your last in that stage? I'm sure you know the ones I mean. Megman gets a splitting headache, and we move on. Stylish maneuver for what? And colliding straight into an enemy. These slinky enemies seem to be remodeled from those from Mega Man 4. They will go up and down a level given a chance. Oh, this is... Stop closing it. Thank you. Blueprints for Mega Man in the background for some reason. Spring Man is, is a researcher? I don't know. He spends all the time bouncing around and Dr. Wily using him as a personal plate or... Okay, this is one of the hard, few hard parts of this stage. Part one, this is the toughest. If I make this across in one take, go me. Nope. And, er, uh, boy. Great, I died in the easiest stage of the game. Let's play Curses in full effect, I see. Ow. That's the cannons. They, those cannons will reappear in the Wily stages in much more annoying locations, as is the premise for Wily stages. Okay, we've got two things. Two things. Yeah, two things. Um, waiting for us to be found in this stage. Get through this and I'll try and find them for you. Come on, Slinky Parade, you can go down now. Da dee 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 Okay, the invincibility frames did not last as long as I thought they did. At least the music's enjoyable. Makes me not actually mind doing this the first part of the stage again, that's a stupid mistake. Come on, thank you. Screw you. Screw you. Uh, ow. This is Cloud Man stage all over again, isn't it? Easy level, lots of fail. Well, maybe I just suck, I don't know. There we go, that's how you do the jump. Okay, this is where the first of the pickups is found. That light start, get the search up. 
Weirdly, what is about to find there is only one of in the game. Just wait for him to dig it up. And... Yeah. As so far as I know, that is a complete um, filler for health. Why one of those is there, I don't know. Okay, the second thing, I have just realised there's actually three things so far, not two. The second item is right here. And it's a somewhat more familiar item. Yeah, you guessed it. That's what you wish to dig it up, see if I've done it in the right place. And giant bolt number three. Uh, let's go on. Okay, these blocks um, will spin when you stand on them. However, when the arrows start flashing, that oh, seems like I can prolong the punch. Um, when the arrows start flashing, there we go. A spring pearl punch comes out to well, try and hit you. We need to manipulate this one to go to the left to bust open that wall to get another bolt. How much is this worth? Nothing, really. Well, not directly. That was Auto's Hyper Bolt. Remember when we visited, when we visited the shop and Auto said, okay, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm half asleep, shut up. Um, and he said he had a couple of screws loose. That's what he meant. He was missing the hyper bolt. Let me get out of the way. Free tank up there, if you saw. Um, anyway, he was missing the hyper bolt. With it, we can buy a new item at, or at Big Eddie's shop. And he also slashes all the prices for existing items by half. Which is pretty helpful. Let me go up here. Maybe we get some little splitting headache. Badly positioned sniper. Ah, not quite fast enough. And we're on to swing man. Just look at that. That looks so much, so like a fair, fairground attraction, doesn't it? The photos of the boys and girls together. Stick your face through the map picture. Uh, no. Anyway. Spring man, get over here. Time to show you how pathetic you really are. That's his pattern. He jumps to the centre, punches at you twice, comes down and fires two wild coils. One forwards, one backwards. He will then jump at you, I think, five times or something? No, four times, before repeating the pattern. One thing you don't want to do is what I'm about to do here. The Thunderbolt, when used, will not damage Spring Man, I think. I wasn't looking at it, just how far when I did that. But it will also pull you in and turn Spring Man momentarily into Magnet Man. And if Spring Man actually manages to catch you, you get one of the deadliest hugs in video game history. But enough of that. Bounce to your springy doom, Spring Man. Yeah, I'm not that witty. And with that, we get the Wild Coil. With Spring Man dressed up as a watermelon. The Wild Coil launches one coil forward and one coil backwards, right? Yes. But remember to charge the coils to make them jump higher. Okay, what it doesn't mention here is the fact that, depending on whether you're holding up or down when you also fire, you can change the tra trajectory that way. It can be pretty helpful. You'll see why later on in the game. Okay, now with celebrations, I think it's time for a bit of a Capcom tribute. 
and shake man stage before we select. If we hold down, I think it's the B button. I don't know, because I'm using an emulator, so I don't know. I forget what buttons the keys are. But if you hold down B, if I get this right, the music changes. Anybody recognise it? It's from an infamous Capcom game. Yeah, ghosts and goblins. I swear to God, if I get anybody, any um, comments complaining about I want to be the guy thanks to this, do not blame me, for God's sake. Blame Capcom. Enemies spawn out of nowhere. You are predictable. Let's get you out of the way. I'm a sucker for free bolts. Just like Ghosts goes and Goblins, which is extremely difficult, be aware of sneak attacks. Where? Uh, yeah. A couple of the heads will come out to hit you. If you want to pre plan where they are, they come out of the third, fifth, and seventh suits of armor. These birds, eight shots to kill, they're basically ravens, or crows, I don't know. Ominous red eyes in the background, I've just noticed that. Ow. Kill. Actually, I will let the next um, bird hit me. Because, well, they gloat about it. Yeah, screw you. Okay, here we've got the bubble bats or baton toms. Back for another go. And we have traps reminiscent to the presses from Mega Man 2. And that baton tom was hanging from a spike. I have no idea how that was. Whoa! Okay, that was close. Oh, next we have the mini boss, which, seeing as we are in a scary place, what better than a pumpkin? There are two ways to defeat this. For what I'm going for for this first run, because yes, we will have to come back here. I'm going to shoot the outer shell. Um, this mini boss has two attacks. One is flying up and randomly shooting green orbs at you in a Dan Matthews style. And the other is just for the inner shell to reach us to the with that. Um, shoot one shot down, one straight across and one upwards. Which can be kind of tricky to dodge actually, thanks to the times. Large energy up there, I want that. Uh -oh. Free small ball. We move to the right here, there is a one up. The super adapter in this day cannot actually reach you. I think the powered up version can. But I don't know. You can climb up that structure and climb and fall back down. But I prefer to do this. Implying that I can actually do it though. You can also rush call your way up, but I think this is actually it's easier. Don't ask me why, I just do. As we climb onto the battlements once more, we find werewolves. Do their body structure look similar? Do they look familiar? They take a lot of hits. Um, they're familiar because in night time, yeah, they're just those night enemies again. Okay, what I'm after on this run should be down here. Yes, it is. Okay, we have a portrait of Dracula Wiley. Yep. 
10 balls to boot. And a suspicious area. Go, Welsh, go! Yep, he's got it. And we've got a leg. And thank you. Rush has just found us the energy balancer, or the energy equaliser, whatever. What this does is, if you do not have a weapon equipped, and you pick up some weapon energy, um, the energy will go to whichever weapon has the lowest amount of energy at that point. Oh, hello. Damn. I was careless. I feel so stupid to have been defeated so easily. Maybe I should give up and leave Wily to you. No. We are a team. Dr. Light will be glad to fix you up. Thanks. I'm glad that I have a friend like you. Yeah, friends that, that actually met in game time about an hour and a half ago. Quickest friendship ever. Anyhow, moving on to Sla Slade Man? Shade Man. Oh, yeah. Slade Man. Christmas is still getting to me. Shade Man is basically if Dracula was a robot master. His special weapon is the Noise Crush. You'll see it in action later. Okay, his first move is to go up into the shadowy heights and try to dive on us. If he does manage to hit me, he will suck my health away and replenish his own with it. Okay, after a couple of dives, he will come down to the side, fire stone beams at us, and two noise crushes. Each time a noise crush rebounds to hit him, he will fire off a much larger version, which naturally does more damage. Not falling for that one. This is quite a simple battle, so long as you know when to jump and slide. Even though it doesn't look at that first large noise crush, you can actually slide under it, as I have shown. If you want to dodge the dives easily, just walk under him. Follow his um, horizontal position on the ground. And there we go. Shade Man is down. And more purple power-ups. Yay. The noise crush generates a powerful sound wave, doesn't it? Yes. And you can amplify the wave by absorbing it, by absorbing the reflective wave with your body. I was jumping ahead of the light then. Um, the noise crush actually has a bit of a trick. Well, two tricks actually. One of the tricks is that it can insta-kill Springman and Turboman in their own stages. But unfortunately I won't be showing that because I've never been able to pull it off. Yeah, that's a tragedy, I know, but I'm not that good at the game. Um, another, game, another trick is that it says that in order to power it up, you have to bounce it off a wall and let it hit you again. If you time it, if you time it perfectly, however, you can actually slide into the noise crush to power it up w without a wall being there. That becomes very helpful in the fortress. With that, we have just two Robo Masters to go. Turboman and Slashman. Oh, God, Slashman. I'm saving you for last for a reason. Uh, that's all for now. So I'll see you next time. This is up.